Johnson, I'm the president of the Pion Council. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Thank you all for coming today. We are here to dedicate this memorial to all the men and women and children who were buried here from 1839 to 1899. Here to tell us about how the Green Slope Cemetery came to be is Anita Kopetsky from the Marshall County Historical Society. Anita is the direct descendant of some of the oldest families buried here. Anita? Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming out. My great great grandparents are in this cemetery. I've been asked to give a little bit of history about the cemetery. The Argus Green Slope Cemetery came into being about the same time as the town, around 1851. 100 years later, on January 5th, 1962, Victor Railsback, my grandfather, wrote a paper about the cemetery, describing its location as situated near third block south, the heart of Argus. He wrote in his paper, of its origin, we will say that three close neighbors, Merrill Williams, Adam Croco, and Isaac Maxson, met one day at a place on this two-acre plot or slope. And Mr. Williams said to them, this two-acre slope would make a good burying ground, and we need it. I would hate to give all of it. Mr. Croco said, you give one acre, and I and Mr. Maxson will pay for a half acre each. This was satisfactory to each. But after a pause, Mr. Williams said, but to whom will I make the deed? Mr. Croco suggested to the public. It was accepted and the deed made to community marriage and named Green Slope. On June 28, 1852, Samuel Merrill of Indianapolis sold these two acres for $20 to the County Commissioners of Marshall County for the purpose of a burial ground and a church if not necessary. While no church was ever built here, the land did become a burial ground. The school was built across the street and was used until 1957 when the present school was built. An old map of the cemetery dated 1880 shows 374 lots and the cemetery was used after that. Victor Railsback stated that the last burial in the cemetery was that of John D. Van Horn, a Spanish-American veteran. But I just learned today from, uh, from uh, Kurt that maybe there were some burials after that, because he thinks he has a deed from a later person. But Mr. Van Horn at least was one of the last burials. He met his death the hard way. He had been on a train, got off, and was walking along the track about a half mile west of here. When the next train came along, he was seen lying with his head and arm on the rail. The train stopped immediately, but not before the engine had run over him, completely crushing his skull. The coroner rushed to the scene, followed by a large number of men, women, and children. Human nature hasn't changed. And the inquest was held right there at the depot. John Van Horn was born at Argus on September 15, 1877. He died August 20, 1899, aged only 21 years, 11 months, and, not, and five days. It was interred here. He will be one of the veterans honored today. On May 8, 1900, the ownership of the land was transferred from the county to the town of Argus. And on February 6, 1901, the Board of Trustees vacated the land. On February 19, 1925, the town asked the state legislature to pass a law prohibiting further burials in a cemetery in towns with less than 2,000 people. In 1945, they had another state law passed stating if burials had not been made in such a cemetery for 40 years, the cemetery could be removed. The process was begun to change the cemetery in a park and the stones were removed. Those who could reinterred their loved ones elsewhere. I have seen two graves at Maple Grove from Green Slope. But probably the majority
majority of those who were buried here are still here. A reading was taken of the cemetery in 1945, right before the tombstones were removed. At that time, the cemetery was almost 100 years old, and some stones had already sunk into the ground or were illegible. The town council promised that a memorial would be put in the park with the names of all who were buried here. That did not happen. It did not happen in my grandfather's lifetime. It did not happen in my mother's lifetime. But now, it has happened. What was done here was not unique. It happens everywhere. The old Washington School in Plymouth was built on the site of that town's first cemetery. Indianapolis first cemetery was removed, and they put a medical building on the site. It's right across from Wright Hospital. They finally put up a small plaque a few years ago for that cemetery, after a group of Barnhill descendants paid some ways. And the same thing happened in New York City and in San Francisco. The well-known parks in those cities? They were once cemeteries. And every once in a while, a long dead body still shows up. <laughs> so repurposing cemeteries is not unique or unusual. But what is unique and unusual about this place here is that now, after 71 years, the town council is rectifying the situation. The current town council is keeping the promise that was made to us 71 years ago to those families whose loved ones are buried here. The current town council has done what is right. Now, the memorial has been put up. That 1945 cemetery reading was used as the basis for the names put on the marker, and others were added as they came to, to the attention of the council. In my genealogy research, I had obituaries of additional family members not in the reading that had been put in the last year. Lisa's made a very great effort to locate all the names of those buried here, and Dustin's wife Donna is working on with her. Still, there may be those whose names have disappeared by 1945 that we could not discover. We may not ever know all who lie here. Only the Lord knows, and on that last day when he returns, at that time, all will come forth from their graves, and many may be surprised where they ended up being buried. In conclusion, my family would like to thank those who worked so hard to make this possible. Lisa, Dustin, the rest of, of the town council, and everyone else who contributed to make this monument a reality. You have gone out of your way to do this, and you have made sure that it would happen. After 71 years, it has finally happened. The memorial is here, and not only that, all the names are on it. Thank you. It would have meant so much to my grandfather who worked so hard to keep the cemetery intact. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to all of us who have family here. Thank you. Thank you. Now the promise of 71 years of the bill has been kept. It's an honor to be asked to, to speak a little bit um, as we memorialize our ancestors and the pioneers buried at this historic cemetery. It's a fitting day to do it, obviously, as you acknowledge uh, the veterans who are laid here to rest. Uh, I've said before, my roots in Argus go pretty deep. Uh, the community wised up and ran us out of town back in the 1950s, so. <laughs> Just kidding. The first of my ancestors uh, laid the rest here occurred in the 1850s, the Chapmans, and you'll see many of the names on the stone. They moved here to, uh, to Walnut Township from New York in about 1843. However, I'd like to mention the last of my ancestors interred here, and that's William Moore and his wife. William, with all of his six brothers, served in the Civil War. Only he and three brothers returned. William was captured and placed in a southern prison where he carved a ring from a horse bone, and it's in the county museum today. William and his brother Frank came to Argus in 1865 and started a sawmill. But the work was too difficult for William, who continued to suffer from an injury he sustained in the war, so he opened a drugstore in town. 
William died and was buried here in 1893. It's important that we take time to memorialize those who came before us, who built our communities, from whom so many of us descend. It is important that we speak their names, lest we forget the hope and the promise tempered by hardship and toil they felt as they embarked on establishing this community that we in past generations have called home. And of course, particularly on this day, it is important that we remember those buried here who served, like William Moore, and many others who courageously held our country together in the darkest hours. A sacrifice very few of us can understand the magnitude of loss to offer a hope that so often we take for granted. It is these relations and this hope that we can and should unite as a community so the generations that follow us will say that we lived up to the legacy entrusted to us from those we remember today. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce Brian Trump. I want to honor the veterans uh, that have been buried here. America is a great nation, strategically placed in history by God himself to be a light of hope for nations. To stand and proclaim the truth of freedom in a world that's absolutely filled with tyranny and to proudly display the best of what mankind can be. Greatness always comes with great responsibility. And with that, why are we here? Why do we enjoy the freedoms that we have today? It's because men and women in our armed forces understand that freedom always has a cost. Since the birth of our nation, we have been incredibly blessed with brave men and women who have stepped forward taken the cause of freedom upon the shoulders, paid the cost, and chose to lay down their lives for the fellow country. And we honor them today. And not only do we desire to honor them, but it's our great desire to pass on these great truths to the next generation so that we never forget we never forget, freedom always comes with a cost, and that cost is going to be blood. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Second Samuel says, the Lord is my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior from violent men. The Lord is worthy of all praise. I call upon Him and I'm saved from my enemies. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You so much for the victory that You have given to us. The victory of America. Lord, we pray that You protect us from the enemies of our freedom, both outside and from within. Lord, we thank You brave men and women of our armed forces. Protect them, Lord, all who are overseas. Lord, bless the families of those who've lost loved ones in our wars. Lord, we thank you so much for those who've laid down their lives for this country. Honor their sacrifice. We pray that you would honor their spilled blood. Continue to lead us and guide our country to be the greatest force for good in this world. Let the light of our country burn brightly and inspire others to stand for freedom over tyranny and destruction. And we pray that you would bless our newly elected president and vice president. Your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. This time, the American Legion Color Guard, led by Jerry Becker, will be presenting to us. Four, one, four, four. Yes, Hong, Huger, sound off.
parade trip. This memorial stands as, I'm sorry, this memorial stands as a fulfillment of a promise made by the Argus Town Council in 1945 when the cemetery was replaced by its memorial park. It might have taken 71 years to honor that promise, but on behalf of the Argus Town Council, I would like to take this opportunity to thank a few people who were instrumental in making this happen. First, the members of the families who came to the council meeting to remind us of a promise that was made. Second, Bob and Janet McKay for initiating the process. Third, Anita Popetsky from the Marshall County Historical Society and Jane Hall from the Argus Town Library for help with lists of names. Fourth, my loving wife, Dawn Johnson, which is standing back there by the car right now, watching the granddaughter. <laughs> For comparing the list of names from different sources to compile the list of names which you see on the memorial today. Fifth, Alan Earl from Earl Grossman Funeral Homes for getting us prices on the cost of the memorial and donating his time for doing so. Alan, right there. Sixth, the Argus Town Council members for approving the funds to honor this promise. For Suzanne Elmbaugh. Council member, and then we have uh, Randy Sneed back here. Uh, seventh, seventh is the town of Argus employees for a job well done on getting the spot ready and helping to set this monument. All of course, also of course, Van Wert memorials for completing the job on time and working with us to make this memorial happen. And finally, the members of the families who helped us by providing names of loved ones they knew to be buried here. In closing, and on behalf of the Argus Town Council, I would like to say, hopefully for the descendants of the families buried in this Green Slope Cemetery, you will find this to be a respectful representation of your family members, and with this memorial, may all residents realize the history that, the, that has made this town a great place to live and raise a family. Thank you all for coming out.